Hey folks, I'm Steven from Opula. This is the assembly video for the semi-assembled Lumen PNP pick and place machine. Before we get started, there's a few things to keep in mind. First off, don't worry if what you see in this video doesn't perfectly match what you have in your box. We are constantly tweaking and tuning things to make it easier and better to use, so if something doesn't quite match up, don't worry about it. Second, confirm that your machine's version number, which is written on the card included in your box, falls within the range of version numbers in this video's title. We redo these videos every once in a while to make sure that they're accurate, so make sure that you're watching the right one. Third, we also have written assembly instructions. If you prefer to use those instead of watching a video or would like to follow along with them while you do watch, there's a link in this video's description where you can go find them. Also, if you run into any trouble during your build process, feel free to shoot an email to support at opula.io and we'll help you get up and running. We also have a great community of folks on Discord that know the machine inside and out, and that's a great place to go hang out and see what they're all working on. In order to complete this build, you'll need a few things. First, you'll need your semi-assembled Lumen PMP in its box. You'll also need a nice, clear, open tabletop for assembly. And lastly, you'll need about 50 minutes to put the machine together. Okay, let's take a look at what's inside the box. Ah. <laughs> so as soon as you open the box, the first thing that you'll see is your Getting Started card. This card gives you the link to go find the written documentation online, and it also has your machine's version number. Take a second to check that this version number falls within the range that's in this video's title. You can also use this version to find the actual version of all the source files that your machine uses on GitHub. If you go to the GitHub repository for the Lumen PNP project and you find the release that matches up with your version number, you can find all of the source exactly as it was that went into building your machine. After removing the top protective layer of foam, you'll see the first tray of components. This tray includes the cable chain, the front and back rail, your staging plate, and your build plate. You can remove this tray by pinching here and here, and then pulling up towards you by rotating, and then pulling it out and setting aside. In the second tray, you'll find the left and right leg assemblies, the tool bag, the staging plate and build plate feet, the X gantry subassembly, the power supply, and the getting started kit. All of the tools that you need to put the machine together are inside of the tool bag. Inside the tool bag, you'll find a hobby knife, some flush snips, a 135 degree angle ESD safe tweezers, an Allen wrench set, and then inside the pouch, You'll find a hardware kit bag that has the hardware needed to assemble the machine. Inside this is also a packet of lubricant that we'll use for a few different steps along the build process. You'll also find a USB type B to USB type A cable, and this is meant for actually controlling your machine. You'll find a USB cable that's meant for connecting your machine to the bottom camera that looks upwards. You'll find a very, very tiny little screwdriver which is used for locking in the camera lenses. There's an ESD safe bracelet an alignment print that will help you make sure that your machine is square and spaced correctly when you're putting it together, and lastly, a pack of zip ties. Now we'll assemble the frame of the Lumen PMP. From this, you will need five parts. You'll need the left and right leg assemblies. You'll find these in the second tray. You'll need the front and back rails, which is in the first tray underneath the cable chain. And you'll need the X gantry assembly, which is also in the second tray. We're gonna put this aside for now and we're just gonna use the first four, but we'll get to this one in just a minute. Before we dive into assembly, let's first check that nothing has loosened up during shipping. Try moving each of the Y gantries and make sure that it doesn't feel loose or wobbly and that there's a fair amount of resistance, but it's still fairly easy to move. Also check the two screws on the bottom side of the gantry and just make sure that they're at least hand tight. None of these screws should be loose. We tension these here at Oculo to make sure that they have the right tension, but sometimes stuff can get loose during shipping, so just make sure that they're at least hand tight for now. Also make sure that you have good tension on your tension arms on the front legs. These are these pivot arms that have a GT2 idler pulley and has the belt that controls the Y gantry running through them. Make sure that when you push out on them a little bit, they give you some resistance and they're not floppy. We're gonna start off by making sure that these two leg assemblies are in the right orientation. You wanna make sure that the front legs are facing you. And again, these are the ones with the tension arms. And you wanna make sure that the left is on the left and the right is on the right. You wanna make sure that the pivot side of the tension arm is facing away and the swinging side of the tension arm is facing the other leg. Another way to check is to look for the clamps that hold the GT2 belt on the Y gantry. Those wanna be facing away from the opposite leg. The smooth side of the Y gantry should be facing each other. You can also check on the cable harness that's attached to each of the leg assemblies, the left leg assembly. The left leg assembly has a label that says Y1 on it, and the right leg assembly has a cable harness that says Y2. Now we're gonna open our hardware bag and we're going to grab two screws and two M5 T-slot nuts. So starting with the left leg assembly, we're gonna insert it into this location right here. And you should see that the other side of the screw is popping out. 
in this little opening inside the print. It can also be handy to use one of the Allen wrenches in your tool set to insert this screw. It can also help to put the leg assembly down on its side while you do this. And then on the other side of the screw that's now poking through the print, you wanna take one of your M5 T-slot nuts and thread it on. You don't wanna tighten it all the way, you do want to get some thread engagement there. It's also very important when you are mounting these T-slot nuts to make sure that the side that has the little ribs on the fins coming out of the nut, that side should be facing the screw. And then the smooth rounded side is the side facing away from the screw. Those ribs give a nice interface to grip against the aluminum extrusion once it rotates and pulls up into it. So make sure when you're putting these on screws, you're always doing it in that orientation. Now that we have the nut in there, we're gonna make sure that it is oriented so that it's pointing upwards when the leg is down on its side. We're doing this so that when we put a rail into this slot, that nut is gonna perfectly fit into the aluminum extrusion. It's gonna make it a lot easier to put things together. So make sure that the nut is in the vertical orientation when the leg assembly is down on its side. Now we're gonna grab our front rail. The front rail is one of the two aluminum extrusions you grab from the underneath your cable chain. And it's the one that only has one right angle bracket on each side instead of two. And on both sides, you're also gonna to wanna to orient the T-slot nuts so that the direction of the nut is perpendicular to the axes of the rail. And now in this orientation, you're going to take the rail and you're gonna rotate it up into the bottom rail of the left leg assembly. As you do this, make sure that the T-slot nut in the front rail is actually fitting into that extrusion and it's sitting flush. There we go, nice and flush. And then after you have it like that, you're gonna slide it into that front print with the nut that we just inserted a couple steps ago. And if it's oriented correctly, it should fit perfectly into that print and there should be no gaps. Now using an Allen key from your tool set, tighten those two loose screws. And as you tighten these, make sure that the right angle bracket that came pre-installed on the front rail is perfectly flush with the bottom extrusion of the left leg assembly. Wonderful, great. So now we have this rail mounted in. Now we're gonna set this aside for just a second and we're gonna do the same thing with the right leg assembly. And same as before, you're gonna to wanna to orient this nut to be vertical while the leg is on its side. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our two legs upright. And that front rail we mounted to the left leg assembly is gonna come down and across. So it should look exactly like this with the two separate parts. The T-slot nut on the other side of your front rail, the right side, now you wanna do the same thing and make sure that it's oriented perpendicular to the axes of the rail because we're about to take this and stick it up into the bottom rail of the right leg assembly. So now we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna take this and we're going to pop it up into the bottom rail and make sure that the front rail is now perfectly flush with the bottom extrusion in the right leg assembly. And then we're gonna slide it, making sure to put pressure upwards to hold it into the rail. We're gonna slide it back into the print. And the front rail should pop into the other nut that you just set in the print. And you should see that it's perfectly flush in the print as well. So we're actually just gonna tighten one of these screws first. It's gonna be the one that we inserted through the print. So go ahead and stick your Allen key through the front of the print and tighten that screw in. I find sometimes while tightening in screws with these T-slot nuts, it helps a lot to unscrew one, one and a half rotations just to make sure that the nut is free spinning and then start tightening again to make sure that the nut will rotate inside the rail and then grip onto the inside of it. After you've tightened that front screw, you can go ahead and take the machine and tip it back up on its back legs, just like this. And now you can tighten the other loose screw on the bottom side. While doing this step, also make sure that the right angle bracket is perfectly flush with the bottom extrusion of the right leg assembly. Great, our front rail is installed. Now it's time to move on to the back rail. The back rail is the other aluminum extrusion you found beneath your cable chain. The back rail is the aluminum extrusion that has two right angle brackets on each side with a total of four. Before we do anything with this rail, make sure that the T-slot nuts are oriented perpendicular to the rail. Now for this next step, we're gonna need the alignment bracket that's in your tool bag. It should look something like this it will have a long side and a short side. These two sides are very specific dimensions that we use for making sure that assembly of the machine goes correctly and everything is in the right place. We're gonna be using the short side for this step. So now that you have all the nuts aligned on your back rail, we're gonna place this on the inside back of the back feet, and then we're gonna rotate the nuts into the bottom rails on both the left and right leg assemblies. You might find that one will fit in just fine, but the other one, the spacing isn't perfectly correct. You might need to grab one of your back legs and pull it out or pull it in just a little bit to adjust and make sure that the T-slot nuts can fit in. That's totally fine. It's very expected that that will happen. Great, that was a good sound. <laughs> Once the rail is sitting nice and flush against the back side of the bottom rails, we can now get the spacing correct. Carefully slide up the back rail, making sure to keep the T-slot nuts inside of the extrusion, and then take your alignment jig and put the short side in between the back foot and the rail. This is setting the spacing for how far away the back rail should be from the feet. It's important that we set this because this allows the back rail to be a valid place to mount feeders down the road so that both the camera and both nozzle tips can reach them. 
Once you have the spacing set, go ahead and just tighten the top screw lightly just to kind of hold it in place. It's also very important to make sure that the right angle brackets are perfectly flush with the extrusion while you do this. I've tacked in that top screw a little bit. Now I'm gonna remove my alignment bracket and I'm gonna put it on the other side and make sure that my other side also has the same spacing. If for some reason you don't have your alignment bracket or you're doing a build without one, this spacing is 50 millimeters exactly. Now before tightening any of them on the other side, really make sure that you have the spacing correct and that your right angle bracket is perfectly flush with this rail. You can go ahead and tighten both of these screws. And lastly, we'll go over to the other side and tighten the bottom screw. Wonderful, that's a back rail mounted. Now we can take the machine and tip it back to be on all four legs again. Now is the time to mount the X gantry assembly. To prep for this, we're gonna take both of our Y gantries and we're gonna slide them all the way to the back of the machine. Now you can take your X gantry assembly and make sure that both of the black motors are facing you and that you can see the red PCB. If you see the silver backside of the motor and some cable clamps, you're looking at the wrong side, you gotta flip it around. You should be seeing both the tension arms on the front legs and the two black motors on the front. And you're just gonna take these two tabs on either side and drop them on the outside of the Y gantries. Perfect. Now using these four screws from the hardware bag, we're gonna take two and insert it in the hole inside the print of the X gantry assembly on each side and tighten them in real tight. Wonderful. Great, and that's your frame built. The next step is mounting the staging plate and the build plate. Now you can remove the build plate and the staging plate from your tray one packaging. On top is the build plate and doesn't have anything attached to it. And then underneath is the staging plate. And this has your motherboard, your two pumps, your two valves, some plumbing and some wiring, along with your bottom camera. This is where the whole control brain of the whole machine lives. This is gonna be the first thing that we mount on your machine. The first thing we're gonna do is remove some hardware from our hardware bag. You can set your machine aside for a minute while we do this next step. And don't forget, you can always let your machine sit back on its back legs and put it upright if you need a little bit more space. With your staging plate in front of you, take your four screws and insert them through the side that doesn't have as much stuff on it, the side that has this boomerang shaped board and your nozzle tip holders. Drop them in from that side so that you see the threads poking out on the side with the motherboard and the pumps. And you can just put those screws into the four farthest biggest holes in the corners of the staging plate. You'll notice that they're a little bigger than most of the holes that are spread all across the staging plate. Those are all for M3 hardware, but the four in the corners are for mounting it to the machine and those are for M5. It also will sit upright with this bottom pump mount and makes it a lot easier to mount stuff to it. And then you can take your four T-slot M5 nuts and just loosely thread them onto each of the screws you just put through in the four far corners of the staging plate. Once you have them all loosely threaded, we're going to grab our machine again and we're going to lay it down flat. And now we're going to take our staging plate and mount it onto the machine with that hardware we just inserted. Now it's very important that you get the orientation of this correct. While the machine is facing you correctly, where you can see both of the nozzle motors and the tension arms are also facing you for the wide gantry, make sure that you're holding the staging plate such that the motherboard is on your left, the pumps are on your right, and the datum board, which is this boomerang shaped board right across from the camera, is on the opposite side of the camera and not on your side of the camera. Now you can take the staging plate and drop it underneath the top rail and resting onto the bottom rail of both of the left and right leg assemblies. Now we need to make sure that the T-slot nuts that we just mounted onto the staging plate drop into the rail well. You might need to give them a little bit of a wiggle to get them to rotate correctly to drop in. But then after you do, you should see that the staging plate is sitting flush on top of the bottom rails on the left and right wide gantry assemblies. Great, that looks good. And now we're gonna get our alignment bracket back out again. And this time, instead of the short side, we're going to use the long side. I'm gonna space out the staging plate such that it's the distance that the long side of the bracket has from the front rail that we mounted earlier. If you'd happen to prefer calipers in this situation, this distance is 75 millimeters. Once you have the staging plate spaced correctly on the left side, you can go ahead and tighten the two screws on the left leg assembly. It also helps before you tighten them down to just double check the other side is also the same spacing. So you're not tightening it down and then you have to kind of pivot it later. Try and get it as close as you can on both sides before you start tightening. Whoops. And now we'll double check the right side and tighten those two screws as well. Wonderful. Now we have a staging plate mounted. Next up, we're going to mount our build plate. This is a secondary staging plate that just doesn't have the same cutout in the center for the bottom camera, and it's just more real estate for you to be able to place a board or strip feeders. We're gonna do the same thing we did for the staging plate with the four machine screws, 
and four T-slot nuts. We're gonna just put them in the same holes on the build plate. When you do this, you wanna make sure that the Lumen PMP staging plate text is on the front and that the Opula logo and the little goblin icon is on the back side. Great, now that we have the hardware in, make sure that you have it oriented correctly for mounting. You should see A through G counting up on the left side of the build plate, and then you should see numbers 1 through 39 counting up along the front of the build plate. This should also match up with the orientation of your staging plate. Go ahead and slide this into the machine just like you did for the staging plate. And just like before, make sure that the hardware pops into the rail. You might need to give it a little bit of a wiggle or a twist, but you know you're in when it's sitting flush on top of that bottom rail. Now pull it all the way down and put it right up against the staging plate and make sure that it's nice and flush along the sides and it's aligned as well as you can get it with your staging plate. While holding it in place, you can go ahead and tighten up the four screws. So now we got both our staging plate and our build plate mounted. We can set aside the alignment bracket for the rest of the build, but hang on to it just in case you need to do maintenance on your machine later or you want to add some upgrades, it might be handy for that. So just put it back into your tool bag for now. Now we need to mount the feet to these two plates. These plates are both actually made out of FR4, the same material that circuit boards are made out of. And this gives us a lot of really cool features that we can add to the machine, but we do need to add a little bit of support in the middle so that they're nice and rigid for all of our placement operations. You can find the staging plate and the build plate feet inside your packaging in the first tray. Go ahead and take your machine and lift it up onto its back legs. For your build plate foot, it's just a single cylinder with a screw that's already pre-mounted in there. You can just unscrew this screw and then place it through the very center of the circle cutout of your build plate. You should see the screw poking through right underneath the little goblin face. Using an Allen key to hold the screw in place, you can tighten this onto the bottom of your build plate. Wonderful. Now you can take your machine and drop it back down. And that's it for the plate installation. The next step is wiring. Now we will be adding the wiring to our Lumen PMP. All of the wiring in this machine is all encapsulated in one part, which is inside of the cable chain. Inside that same area, you'll also find this print. This is what we use to hold the cable chain on the front left leg and hold it up high enough so that it gets out of the way of all the motion. The first thing we're gonna do is mount this onto the machine. Have your machine facing you. This means having the tension arms for both of the Y gantries facing you, and you should also be able to see both of the rotation motors on the head. Open up your hardware bag and grab the M5 screws from it. Take your cable chain mount print and just rest it along the left side of your front left leg. Use the shorter of the two screws to go into the top hole and tighten it into the front left leg. Then use the longer of the two screws and put it into the bottom hole. Go ahead and tighten these in and make sure that it's mounted nice and rigid. Now you can grab your cable chain assembly from your packaging and unwrap it so you can see what is coming out of each end. You should find that the cable chain has wires coming out of one end, wires coming out of another, and then one that comes out actually right in the middle with a print attached to the end. Find the side of the cable chain that doesn't just have wires, it actually has a print that has been zip tied onto the cable. This is the side of the cable chain that we're going to attach to the print we just mounted on the front left leg. Align the cable chain so that it's sitting on the little ledge on the print that we just mounted, and then grab two M5 screws and use them to mount the cable chain into that print. It helps to fold the cable chain back on itself and grab it with one hand while you tighten in the screws with another. That's usually how I do it. You will need to thread these screws through the cable chain a little bit. The opening is just a little tight for the screw, but that's totally okay. Don't worry if at any point in this process, some of the little retaining clips that hold the cabling into the cable chain pop out. They're actually meant to do this, and this is how we get the cabling inside the cable chain to start. If it happens, don't worry. Just readjust where your cables are and pop them back into place. Now that one side of the cable chain has been mounted, you can grab the other one and bring it over towards the head. I like to bring the whole Y gantry towards me. This just makes it a lot easier to do this step. Now take a look in your hardware bag and grab two M5 screws, and you can use them to do the same thing that we did on the front left leg print with this section right here on the X gantry. The cabling might get in your way a little bit here. Feel free to remove any packaging on the cables on the end, and this should free you up to be able to mount this thing pretty easily. Once these are tight and in place, you now have your cable chain mounted to your machine. The next thing we're gonna do is address this one cable that's sticking out halfway through the cable chain. Before we mount it, check and see where it's actually exiting the cable chain. There's a custom print that we designed that holds this cable up to get it out of the way. You might find that it's popped out during transit. If that's the case, don't worry, just pop it back into place. And then we can go ahead and mount this onto the X motor. Align this print zip tied to the cable on the back of the X motor as shown. And make sure that the cable is zip tied on the back side of the print from your perception so that when you attach it in place, the cable can plug right into the X motor. You can affix this print in place using two screws that you can find in your hardware bag. After you've tightened these two screws in place, you can go ahead and take the cable and plug it right into the motor. Now we're going to plug in all of the loose wires on the X gantry into all the places that they belong. Two of the cables are sticking out through the back of the cable chain, 
and these two go to our downward facing camera and our downward facing light. Take your cable with just three wires sticking out of the back of the cable chain and plug it into the downward facing light. Take the cable with four wires and plug it into your downward facing camera. These two cables are the only two cables that plug in on the back side of the X gantry. Everything else is going to plug in on either the top or the front. Now find the connector that has four holes, but only three of them are populated with wires. This is going to plug into the limit switch. This is the red PCB on the top right side of your X gantry. Now identify two cables that are labeled LM and RM. Left and right is from the perspective of looking straight onto the machine, so go ahead and take the LM cable. This should have a six pin connector with only four wires going into it, and just guide it up over the top of the Z motor. We're going to zip tie this cable in place to the X gantry. Grab one of your zip ties, slide it in through this slot, and then zip tie the cable into the print, making sure that the cable is sticking out towards you. You want to give it a little bit of slack on the back side, but not too much. We really want to keep it all in the front for the movement of the Z gantry. Now we're going to do the same thing with the RM cable. You'll find a similar slot on the right side just above the limit switch. Go ahead and zip tie that in place as well, also ensuring that the cable is sticking out towards you. After you're done, you can go ahead and take the flush snips that came in your toolkit and just snip off the excess of the zip ties. And now you should have those cables nice and cleanly routed. Now you can take the LM cable for the left head and plug it into the rotation stepper on the left Z gantry. The cable plugs in on the front side of the motor, but the plug actually goes in from the bottom. But as you press it in, make sure that the two little detents on the connector are facing you. You can go ahead and do the same thing for the RM cable and plug it into the stepper motor on the right Z gantry. Now we're going to attach the two pneumatic lines to the two heads. Look for the two bits of tubing. One should be labeled LH and the other RH for left head and right head. Go ahead and take the LH tubing and press it into the pneumatic fitting that's attached to the top of the motor on the left Z gantry. This is just a press fit, so go ahead and push it in all the way until it stops moving, and then you know you're all set. Before you press it in, make sure that it's in between the LH and RH cable harnesses. Now we're going to do the same thing for RH into the right head, and just press it into the pneumatic fitting on top of the motor until it can't go in anymore. And last but not least, we're going to take the one remaining cable. It has four wires going into a six pin connector, and we're going to plug it into the stepper motor that drives the Z gantry. Now the machine's head is all wired and plumbed up. Now it's time to plug in the other half of the cables. Now that we have the cable chain installed, it's important to know that when you tip the machine back on its legs, you should move the head all the way to the right on the X gantry and all the way back on the Y. This makes sure that the cable chain doesn't get bunched up or put any undue stress on any parts of the machine. Now that the head is in the far back right, we can go ahead and lift the machine up onto its back legs. You should now see a whole bunch of cables coming through from the cable chain mount that we had put on in an earlier step and re-identify that print that's zip tied onto the cable bundle. Before we mount the cabling to the frame, we're first going to remove the cover of the motherboard. After you remove the hardware holding it in, carefully lift up on the cover and make sure that you rotate it out underneath this tubing. After you've unscrewed the hardware in the corners of the cover, carefully lift it up over the heat sinks and rotate it out from underneath this tubing. You'll notice that some things are already pre-installed in here for you. We need to plug in the Y motor cables. On the left side, you should find the Y1 cable. Go ahead and route this underneath the motherboard and then plug it into the first Y connector. This is the second one from the left along the top edge of the motherboard. Slide this clip-in bracket that holds the cable in as far up as you can go to help keep the Y motor nice and tensioned inside the aluminum extrusion. Now we're going to do the same thing for the right leg. You should find the loose Y2 cable attached to it. We're going to do the same thing for the right motor that we did for the left where we slide this bracket up so that it holds the cable nice and taut. And then you should find two peak array clamps right here and right here that are going to hold this cable nice and tight in place. You'll have to loosen these two clamps from the top side in order to get the cable underneath and then tighten them back down. Take the wire labeled XM for X motor and plug it into the first white connector along the left side. Next, find the cable labeled ZM and put it in the fourth slot from the left. Next, find the cable labeled LM and plug it into the farthest connector on the right. Wonderful, now we can take the two pneumatic tubing lines that are still sticking out from the top of the motherboard. You can push them back down underneath and now have them come out the right side of the motherboard. Now that they're sticking out the right side, we're going to plug them into these two pneumatic couplers. If you look at the print holding the pneumatic couplers, you'll notice that one of them is labeled LH for left head and one of them is labeled RH for right head. Find the LH and RH labels on the two pneumatic tubings and plug them in so that they match. These are exactly like the connectors that are on the top side of the Z gantries when you plugged in the two heads. Just press the tubing into the coupler until it can't go in anymore and then you know it's been seated correctly. Take this opportunity to ensure that none of your tubing has any kinks or bends in it. If this is the case, we'll have a hard time picking parts later because the vacuum pressure won't be able to travel through the tubing. 
You can take the cable labeled DL and plug it into the top light connector. This is right beneath the connector that's already plugged in and also right next to the two slots in the PCB that hold the pneumatic tubing. Next, we're gonna plug in the RM cable. We're gonna plug this one into the far left connector on the second row right above these two stepper motor drivers. And lastly, we're gonna take our ZL cable and plug it into the Z limit switch connector. Make sure that all your cabling lays nice and flat. And at this point, we can go ahead and secure this print that had excess strain relief for all the cables into the bottom of the rail. We're gonna take the motherboard cover and put it back on top of the motherboard. You might need to press some of the cabling down and make sure that it's all nicely sitting in there so that we can fit the cover on. And then tighten it back down using the hardware that you removed in an earlier step. And there we have it. To make sure that it's mounted on correctly, press on the boot and reset buttons on the top side of the cover. You should hear a click from each one just to make sure that we're actually pressing the buttons on the motherboard. We have one final cable to attach before we're done with our wiring. You can actually find this cable inside of your tool bag. It'll have a four pin connector on one side and a USB cable on the other. This is for the bottom camera and take the four pin side of the connector and plug it into the bottom camera. After you have it plugged in, we're gonna strain relief it with the little cutout that's on the side of the camera mount. And we're gonna just zip tie this cable right to the inside to hold it in place. Use your snips to trim the excess zip tie. And then you can just run this cable underneath the motherboard and out the other side just to keep the cable in clean. And lastly, you can put the staging plate foot on and make sure that the, where you have the cable coming out lines up with the little cutout in the foot so that it can fit on no problem. And that's it. You can go ahead and take your machine and pull it back down and you're all done. The final step is testing your machine and making sure that everything is connected properly.